Hi, this is Al Tompkins from Al's Morning Meeting, and I'm talking to Dr. Don Hyder, the University of Maryland. Hi, Don. How you doing, Al? Um, you've been studying this uh, whole second life phenomena. What is second life? Well, second life, according to the developers, a 3D virtual world um, with about over 5 million residents. Now, who knows how many residents there really are. That's how many unique accounts there are. But we don't really know how many accounts. But there's probably about a million, a million and a half people. And it's a world that has some kind of uh, physics to it. It has a land mass. It has air. It has water. And um, it's a place where people go to play, to create, to do business, socialize, all those things. There are university classes that use this as pretty serious, uh, pretty serious teaching tool. What do they do with it? Well, I think a lot of places are experimenting with that right now. I think they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with it now in the future. Um, some places are teaching architecture class. Others are doing experiments in learning. The problem is, right now there's no voice in Second Life, and so it's a tough place to give a lecture. But to get students to experiment, try building, try doing some visual things, um, I think it's a good place. And, and I know a lot of teachers are also using it to try interviewing skills online. So they're trying ethnography or participant observation getting students out there to interview people who are living in the world about what they're doing and why they're there. Now Reuters actually is involved uh, in Second Life. They've mm -hmm. actually assigned a correspondent to cover it. What's that about? Well, I think what they decided was that Second Life was important enough and big enough that they needed to have a presence there. And so they built an island. Uh, it's a very good island where you can get interactive news 24 hours 7. But also they put this correspondent there who's there about four hours a day and he's finding unique stories to report uh, about Second Life, the residents, uh, especially business, but a lot of other things that are going on in the world. What do you think the journalism story is for us? What could we be covering, uh, those of us who are journalists, what, what's the story that needs to be covered here? I think one question is, is this the next big thing? A lot of people have speculated that 3D virtual worlds might be the next kind of internet. That instead of shopping online at Land's End or LLB, you go to a virtual world, create an avatar that looks like you, then you can try on the clothing before you buy it. Or you can test drive a car before you buy it from Nissan or another company. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of potential, and I, I think people really don't know where it's going. A lot of venture capitalists have put their money in Second Life, but I think it's open-ended, and I think that's what's attracted a lot of people. What do we know about the demographics of the people who are using this? Yeah, the demographics, from what they've released, and Linden Labs, who owns Second Life, uh, doesn't always isn't always forthcoming with all that information. But the demographics generally are adults between the ages of 25 and 35, and I think they really range in terms of uh, racial, ethnic background, gender. Um, and there's a huge international community as well. Um, if you were going to forecast where Second Life is going a year from now, what would you guess? Well, it's interesting. The growth has really been explosive. The first year I was on, I've been on for about two and a half years, it grew very slowly and they did almost no marketing. But because of a lot of publicity and news stories, it's really grown exponentially. If it continues to grow this way, um, you know, I don't really know where it's going. I guess there are some concerns, and some of the concerns involve whether technically they can take more residents. Right now it's, it's glitchy at times. It's uh, hard to get more than uh, 40 or 50 people in one region. And so the most you see on any time, at any time, is about 30,000 people. If we have 10 million people, 10 million accounts in Second Life, rather than 5 million, what is what kind of pressure is that going to put on the on the servers, on the technical aspects of the game? So I think that's one big question. Um, I think one more question: How does Linden Labs make money from this? <laughs> well, that's a really good question. A lot of people who've written about Second Life don't know and don't know if they're in the black or not. Uh, they really haven't been forthcoming. They're a privately held health company. And so, um, the, what is the business plan? I think uh, because a lot of the transitions, transactions that go on there every day, 
Um, you don't know whether they're making any money off of that or not. It might just be between you and I. Um, people do have to buy land from the Lindens. They do have to pay land fees. There are sort of taxes. But uh, I, I think the jury's still out whether or not it's going to be a, a profitable corporation or not. My old friend Don Heider, always on the front end of something uh, interesting and cool. You're working on a book now about this. When's the book coming out? The book will probably be out next year. We're collecting chapters right now from collaborators from all over the world. And do you have a working title? Yeah, Living Virtual. Living Virtually, good. Uh, and uh, journalists watching this who want to talk to you about this for news stories, how could they contact you, Don? They can contact me at the University of Maryland, either through email or just call me at the College of Journalism, the Philip Merrill College of Journalism at the University of Maryland. Don Heider, thanks a million. Al Tompkins, reporting for Al's Morning Meeting. Thanks, Al.